Hello everybody! Today I'd like to talk about one of the most famous Russian Tsars, Ivan the Terrible. Actually, his nickname Terrible is a wrong translation from Russian. In Russian, Grozny means inspired with fear, and he got this nickname during seven years of Aprichnina. Ivan the Terrible, or Ivan IV, was born in 1530, and from three years old, he was a great Duke of Moscow Duchess. As he was young, the Russian kingdom was ruled by his mother, Elena Glinska, and after her death, boyars ruled. Ivan IV became a real ruler of the country at the age of 17. Historians divide Ivan IV's reign into two periods. First is the early period, and second one is Aprichnina. In 1546, he became a first Russian Tsar, and one year later he married Anastasia, the most beloved wife among seven of them. During the early period, Moscow Tsardom successfully expanded its territories. In October 1552, Russian army took Kazan and later Kazan and Astrakhan Kaganates. They established outposts in western Siberia, took Bashkiria and the territories of Nagai Horde. Ivan IV even founded consensus with boyars and created the Chosen Council, which operated from 1540 to 1550. The chosen council included people who the Tsar trusted and discussed foreign and domestic affairs. After the chosen council, Ivan IV established the Zemsky Sabor, the first Russian parliament of feudal states. During the 1550s, he was under influence of two people, his priest confessor Sylvester and Alexei Adashev. Sylvester told him that the god punishes Tsar's subjects for his sins, so the Tsar should become better. Adashev did not belong to the noble class, but he was smart and had bright ideas. He was very loyal to Ivan IV. In 1550, Ivan IV wrote the Sudebnik, something between constitution and criminal code. He established the Council of the Hundred Chapters Stoglavy Synod in 1551, which unified the rituals and ecclesiastical regulations of the whole country. Ivan IV established a standing army, Strelitsy. They were a professional army. There was a new self-governing system introduced in rural regions. The governor should rely financially only on his domain and send taxes to Moscow. In 1553, Ivan IV got sick. Presumably, he had pneumonia. Everybody thought he would die and boyars started to compete for power in front of dying Tsar. The Tsar asked boyars to swear allegiance to his young son, Dmitri. But boyars had another idea. They wanted to make the next star from Ivan IV's cousin, Vladimir. They had good relations with Vladimir, and in case of Dmitri, his mother Anastasia would be a regent until Dmitri's adultery. But they were not on good terms with Tsaritsa. Surprisingly, Ivan IV got better and was able to recover from the disease. He was insulted by boyars' treason who wanted to give the crown to his cousin, not to his son, which was a traditional way. Boyars also did not support Ivan IV's endeavor of Livonian War. The Tsar saw Russia as a bridge between Europe and Asia, and he needed a port in Baltic Sea to trade with the Western states. He wanted to take spices and other products from the East, add Russian foreign lumber, and sell it through Baltic Sea. At that time, Livonian Confederation was very weak and was supported by Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Sweden. At first, Russian army was victorious, but after 1560, the situation has become difficult. The army suffered defeats at the front. The last event which turned Ivan IV against boyars and turned his distrust into paranoia was the death of his beloved wife Anastasia. He was sure that boyars poisoned her. It might be true because in her remains arsenic and uh, lead were found higher than the norm. At the same time, Duke Kurbsky defected to Polish king. He was Ivan IV's best friend and counselor. So, Ivan IV decided to destroy all the elites and gain absolute power. To do that, he created a very complicated plan. 
On December 3, 1564, Ivan IV left Moscow with the state seal and went pilgrimage to village Kolomenskaya. After he left the village, he did not come back to Moscow and nobody knew where he was. After one month, he wrote a letter to the people from Alexandrovskaya Sloboda. In that letter, Ivan IV stated that he wanted abdication and next star would be his son Ivan. He doesn't want to be a Tsar anymore because he's tired of Bayar's treason, theft and intrigue. Boyars were confused. They didn't know what to do and how to contain mass anger. They sent bishop to Ivan IV in order to solve this situation. In February, Ivan IV came back to Moscow and pushed forward new reforms, which were the conditions of him coming back. From now on, all Russia would be divided into two parts, Aprichnina and Zemshina. The first one would be under control of Ivan the Terrible and Zemshina would be under control of Boyar's Duma. In the lands of Aprichnina, Ivan the Terrible kicked out all the unwanted elites and gave their houses to Aprichnik, the new people who totally obeyed him. For the role of the Tsar, Ivan the Terrible put Simeon Begbulatevich, who was a Tsar for Zemshina, and Ivan the Terrible was just a Moscow duke. Using Simeon, Ivan the Terrible could confiscate George or Boyar's territories, but blame him, as he was an official ruler. The word Aprichnina means widow's share. In Russia, after the death of the head of the family, his lands were divided among sons, and a very small share was given to their mother in order to sustain her living. By calling his lands Aprichnina, Ivan the Terrible appealed to the masses with the image of himself as a modest and humble man who did not want much. Aprichnina was seven years. Aprichniki were new people having no noble background. Giving them lands for service period, Ivan the Terrible attempted to create an army which was loyal only to him, and they were eager to get into the conflict with old elites. Aprichniki usually rode horses, wore hoods, and had a broom attached to the saddle. With the broom, they were showing that they would sweep away all the Ivan the Force enemies. They also had a dog's head attached to the saddle, meaning that they would bite all of the enemies. The main premise of Aprichnina was Ivan the Terrible's mistrust of boyars and his fear of death. Boyars were not appointed, their titles descended from father to son. Boyars' families had watchinas, lands that were given for a lifetime. There they had serfs who worked for them and fed them. So every time Ivan the Terrible had a conflict with a particular boyar, all of them united against him. Aprichnina's main purpose was to destroy boyars. As he could not directly kill all of them, he created a new class of Aprichniks who would slowly exterminate them. As the country was divided into two parts, the ministers were also doubled, which created chaos and inability to govern. Anybody who was against his order was executed. Aprichniki used treason to punish anybody they wanted and take their assets. But now, not only a so-called traitor was executed, but all his family. The most notorious case of Aprichniki's massacre happened with Bishop Philip. He became a metropolitan of church in Russia in 1568, although he refused this offer many times. Philip was against Aprichnina, and during the service in Uspensky Cathedral, him and Ivan the Terrible had an open conflict. After the service, Philip had to bless Ivan the Terrible. Bishop came out and pretended that he had not noticed Ivan the Terrible. His aprichniki started to yell at the bishop, saying he had to bless Tsar, who was wearing monk's clothes. Philip said that he did not recognize Tsar in that appearance and he also did not recognize Tsar in his actions. You pray here and outside there are rivers of blood. In the end, he did not bless him. Later on, Aprichnike killed all Philip's men. Ivan the Terrible gathered the court to punish Philip. The members of the court justified that Philip was a traitor. During the court procedure, Philip took off his uh, metropolitan clothes and gave away all the church objects. He was a simple bishop now. Later, during the service in the church, Aprichnik Maluta Skuratov dragged Philip out of the church. He took off his clothes and dressed him in torn clothes and took him away on his cart. 
Philip was sent into exile to Novodevichy convent, and in 1569, Skuratov came to the convent and smothered him with a pillow. Later, the church made Philip saint. Philip's case was not the only one. Ivan the Terrible also killed his cousin Vladimir, whom boyars wanted to make Tsar if Ivan IV would die. After Ivan the Terrible heard a rumor that Vladimir is popular, he invited him to his house and offered to drink poison. After Vladimir's death, his lands were given to Aprichniki. In 1569, Novgorod wanted to become a part of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. After hearing news about treason, Ivan the Terrible sent Aprichniki's army. On the way there, they raided other cities like Tver, Tarzok, Vyshny, Volozhek. As it was hard to kill each rebel in Novgorod, Ivan the Terrible gave an order to drown all rebels at once. For six weeks, Aprichniki killed, robbed, and destroyed Novgorod. Around one-third of the city's population was killed. In 1571, Crimean Kagan made an offense to Moscow. The Aprichniki's army didn't want to fight with them, so only one unit of Aprichniki, two units of Zemshina, were gathered to defend Moscow. In result, Moscow was burned. Ivan the Terrible ran away and Aprichnina came to its end in 1572. In my opinion, the fact that Aprichniki did not come to war with Crimean Kagan was not the only reason for abolishment of Aprichnina. Dictators who use mass terror to consolidate power usually get rid of those people who were instrumental to that terror. Take, for instance, Stalin and Yuzhov, Hitler and stormtroopers. The consequences of Aprichnina were terrible for the country. First, it was economic damage. Many lands were abandoned, thus no agricultural produce nor taxes. Second, worsening of defense capability, unsuccessful Livonian war and raid of Crimean Kagan. Third, was centralization of power and establishment of unlimited power of the Tsar. Fourth, the system with provincial dukes was eliminated, which made all the provinces rely on the center. This trend we can see even in modern-day Russia. And fifth, worsening of serfs' condition. In order to save landlords from devastation, Ivan the Terrible cancelled Yurip Day, when serfs could change their landowners. I found an interesting hypothesis on why Ivan the Terrible needed Aprichnina. Historian Alexander Atkin emphasized that all Aprichnina lands were near White Sea along River Dvina. In 1565, an English ship came there. English bought lumber and fiber from hemp to make textile. All the cities along the river made produce for export. So, Ivan the Terrible needed Aprichniki to protect trade and collect taxes. I do believe it was not a reason for creation of Aprichnina, rather a source to sustain it, giving Aprichniki an opportunity to collect taxes and put some amount into their own pockets. The real reason was Ivan the Terrible's constant fear of being betrayed by boyars and his desire for absolute power, which is very common to Russian autocrats throughout the history. What do you think? Did it bring any positive result? Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week. Bye-bye!